In this video, we'll talk about the two different methods for finding volumes of solids of revolution and how you can analyze which one you should pick for a given problem. So both of these methods work equally well for pretty much any problem you'd want to solve. You could use either method to solve pretty much any problem of this type. It usually turns out, though, that one of them is a lot easier to use than the other. So let's analyze these methods and see sort of how they work and how they relate to each other so you can know which one to pick for a given problem. So say you're revolving around a vertical axis. And you've got your object sitting over here. If you want to use shell method, you need to rotate this vertical segment around that line. And you need to be able to find the radius and the height of that cylindrical shell. So basically you've got, you know, the radius is the length in here, and the height is the length of that segment. If you want to use washers, you're rotating a horizontal segment around this line. So something like this. And to figure that out, I need to find the inner and outer radius of this washer. In addition, in this case, the shells will be a dx integral and the washers will be a dy integral because of how it all gets set up. So the question really comes down to which of these is easier to find. If you're given y as a function of x, you might default to the shells method because then you can leave y as a function of x and don't have to make it be in terms of y. In addition, if you can find this height pretty easily, the radius is usually pretty simple. If you can find the height, then shells is probably good to go. However, if you were given these things as functions of y and that height's trickier, the inner outer radius is just easier, maybe you want to go with washers instead. It really comes down to which of these two things, along with the function variables, are easiest to work with. If they want to default to not converting the function between variables, that's up to you. It depends on what the function looks like and how it gets put together. Really, whichever of these is easier to figure out is the way you should go for solving this problem. For the other axis of rotation, the roles are sort of reversed. If I have a horizontal axis of rotation, then shells require horizontal segments and a dy integral, and washers are vertical segments and a dx integral. Again, it depends how the region is given to you, what the functions look like, if you can invert them and go back and forth to solving in terms of y or in terms of x, and how hard it is to find these different segments. If it's easy to do both of them, then just pick whichever one you want to use. It doesn't really matter. As long as you solve the problem using one of these two methods, you'll get the answer either way. You'll get the same answer no matter which method you use to solve out this problem. As an example, we're going to do this problem two different ways. We want the region between x and y equals x and y equals x squared around the line x equals minus 1 by both shells and washers. We'll get the same answer both times, and then we'll see which one looks easier at the outset, and then you can also pick which one you think is easier for solving these problems in the future. So what's our region look like? Well, it's the parabola in the straight line. We've seen this region before in earlier videos. And the region I care about is this part in here. I'm revolving around the line x equals minus 1, which is over here. Okay. So we're going to do this one both by shells and washers. Let's start with shells. So for the shell method, since I have a vertical axis of rotation, I need to rotate around a vertical segment. So we're going to have a segment like that that I'm rotating, and this is going to be a dx integral because these segments will tile in the x direction. So what's my radius? Well, my radius is the distance that I am from the axis of rotation. So it's from here to there. So the radius should be 1 plus x. My height should be the distance between these two functions, which goes from the top function, which is x, to the bottom function, which is x squared. And my bounds will be 0 and 1, because that is in the x direction where this region goes. It's the same in the y direction, but we'll get there in a second. So that lets me set up this integral to try to solve it. So the volume should be 2 pi integral from 0 to 1, 1 plus x times x minus x squared dx. Then we can solve this out and see what we get for this volume. And then we do all that work, and the answer we get from that is a pi over 2. So that's the work that you it looks like when you do this problem via the shell method. Figure out the segment, find the radius, find the height, integrate all that out, and see what you get for the answer. Now if we want to solve the same problem with the washer method, we're going to have to rotate a horizontal segment around this line, and it's going to involve a dy integral. So there is our segment, and it's going to involve a dy integral here. So we're going to need our inner and outer radius, and then our bounds of integration. So back to our picture, the inner radius should be this distance from here to the first thing we cross, which is the line y equals x, from there. But this needs to be in terms of y. So in, in this case, we are solve this out, and we get that, again, that x equals y. Since going y units would get me to the axis, I have to go one more than that. So my inner radius should be y plus 1. 
And what about the outer? Well, the outer has to go all the way to the y equals x squared, which when I solve out the other way is x equals square root of y. So by the same logic, my outer radius should be square root of y plus 1. And then my bounds go from 0 to 1 like before because it's on y equals x and those are where those lines cross. So my inner radius was y plus 1. My outer radius was root y plus 1. And then my bounds were from 0 to 1. And again, just like before, we can now set up the integral and solve for the volume. So the, inner, the volume here should be pi integral from 0 to 1, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared dy. And then we can expand these out and solve out this problem. The ones will cancel out once you foil out both terms. Now we can combine things together and then find the antiderivative and solve. Then plugging in 1 gives me pi over 2 again. So like I mentioned before, you get the same answer no matter how you solve out this problem. It's going to be the same volume no matter which way you do it. But the question is, which of these two do you think is easier? In general, I will say it's usually easier not to switch the variables of the function. So it would be much easier just to do this problem by shells because I was already given these bounds as y equals f of x. I could then put those in and be done and not have to solve out for the square root of y. But it depends on how you visualize the problems and how you want to think about it, which method is easier for you to use in order to solve these problems. Because either one works, it's up to you to pick which one you want to use in each given problem to solve it for the volume of these solids of revolution.